everyone, I'm Allison and this is Allison's Bake My Day Challenge. So for 2021, I tasked myself with baking something new once a week since I got very obsessed with the Great British Bake Off or the Great British Baking Show, excuse me. Today I'm starting with an almond vanilla meringue shoe bun. Everything's new, it could all go horribly wrong or wonderfully right, we'll see. First, I'm gonna be separating my egg yolks and egg whites for the creme pat that's going to go inside the shoe buns. It's gonna be just a vanilla pastry cream. It's a basic pastry cream. We have to separate because the yolks are used in the vanilla pastry cream, and then the whites I'm gonna use for the meringue so we don't have any waste. Okay, that's some minutes. All right, some people like to use their hands I prefer to not get as messy and I feel like I always have worse luck breaking the yolk if I use my hands. So I just like to use the eggshells as little cups, personally. Now that we've got our eggs separated, I'm going to heat the milk. Got organic whole milk. And I need two cups for 480 milliliters of whole milk. Okay, that's gonna go in here. And we're gonna put that on medium to medium high heat and let that come not to a full boil but get it hot. I'm going to put a tablespoon of vanilla extract. If you want to use a fresh vanilla pod you're more than welcome. If you're doing that scrape the beans out and and put them in the milk with the pod to let it simmer like you would be brewing tea essentially. So you're gonna let that simmer in the milk rather than putting in the eggs. But if you're using vanilla extract, you're gonna put it in with the eggs. So I've got my three yolks and then one whole egg in here and a pinch of salt, pinch of salt. And then I have 75 grams or six tablespoons of sugar and then 30 grams of arrowroot starch. The recipe calls for corn starch, but I prefer to use arrowroot starch because I try to minimize corn in my diet as much as possible. Start whisking this, get all this in here. That's how you make whisk noises. Okay, get in there, get in there starch. Okay, all right. Now, we're gonna get all of this whisked together, whisk it up. Now you do want to really whisk it. You could use um, a hand mixer, which I have and I could probably have used, but that would have been super noisy for you guys. Just saying. This next part is the tricky part, and this is the part that is kind of terrifying for me. <laughs> so I've never made uh, a pastry cream before, and this is the hard part because you want to pour the hot milk a little bit into the egg mixture so that you temper the egg yolks and cook them without scrambling them, without like cooking them, cooking them, keeping them in their liquid state, but actually cooking them so that you're, they're safe to eat, right? So this is the part that stresses me all a little bit, but also excites me because if I get it right, it's pretty cool. So the milk is warm, the mixture is combined and a nice pale yellow and thick in consistency, which is what we want. So now, here we go. Woo! We did it. Okay, we've tempered the eggs, so now we're gonna add it back into here. Ooh, I'm gonna have to turn this on. Low. Let's just get it low so that it doesn't boil the milk anymore. So we're gonna get our egg mix in here. Whisking, 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 whisking. We want there to always be movement. Always be movement in here. I'm gonna keep that bowl right there because we're gonna keep that from we're taking this off the heat. Okay, so now we're just gonna whisk this constantly until it starts thickening. There we go. We've got it over medium heat. We should be whisking this for one to two minutes. Are you having fun yet? I'm having fun. Oh, I can feel it thickening. It's working. Oh, it's 
Christmas gift and I think that would work so well. to put it back in this bowl. Oh man, that definitely thickened up. Made a very thick, stiff pastry cream. Look at how thick that is. It's like sticking to it. Holy crap. That's amazing. Yeah, there we go. It was almost looking a little too thick and I was worried. And then I realized I forgot the butter. Who forgets the butter? Now we'll cover it. Now we'll do that. We'll cover it now. Oh gosh. That was almost real bad. Get out of my face hair. My God. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, please be green. I have committed a sin against the pastry cream gods. Terrible. Measuring butter. So, I need 75 grams of butter. I have 30 from the end of one. I use Kerrygold butter, high quality. Uh, we're eyeballing, let's see, I need 75. That is, what? 74. I'm getting really good at eyeballing, I have to say. <laughs> nope, 73, it changed its mind. That's okay, take these thin slivers. Now wait, what, whoa, whoa. Now it says 75, now it's a 73. Now it's a 76, 77. You know what? I'm gonna keep the extra butter. No, I can't. I can't, oh God, I can't do it. I can't keep the extra butter. My perfectionist was like, what? Extra butter? Don't do that. For the top of the shoe bun, I'm actually making a sable, which is, um, sort of just like a crackle top for the shoe. It's um, butter, brown sugar, and flour. And I'm using half flour and then half almond flour because we're making it almondy because it's an almond shoe bun. So yeah. So I have 75 grams of butter in here and I need 100 grams of soft brown sugar. It specifically says soft brown sugar. So if your brown sugar is a little old and it's hard, Pop it in the microwave. It'll soften. 100 grams right on here, so we should have 174 on our readout here. One seventy four. We got it. Okay. I ended up having to get my stand mixer out anyway. Not stand mixer. <laughs> That's always out. <gasps> um, my hand mixer. It rhymes. Uh, because we have to cream the butter and the sugar together with my handy dandy hand mixer. And we're gonna cream the butter and the sugar together until it becomes nice and smooth. So creamy. Okay, so the next step is to add the flour. So we're gonna measure out our flour. Flour. Flour is what I was trying to say. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so we need 50 grams. Whoop. 50 grams of this bad boy. <laughs> Thought I had enough counter space. I feel like I don't have enough counter space. No. Okay. Going for 100 grams now. 100? Thank you took a second. Okay, now the recipe says to add the flour until a smooth dough has formed. It doesn't say to beat it in, so I'm actually just gonna use a spoon to mix. So we've got our 100, gra 100 grams. Mouth is just like excellent today. So we're going to mix this 100 grams mix of almond and regular flour, regular, some regular flour, and we're gonna mix it into this. Oh 
man, I'm losing my mind today. Everything's fine. All is well. So what happens is I'm gonna make this into a dough here. Because with the butter content, what's gonna happen when it bakes in the oven is that butter's gonna melt and that almond and flour and then the sugar are gonna create a crackly top on top of the shoe bun to make it all crackly and delicious. Time for some parchment paper. I'm not really sure how wide it's gonna be. Putting another one on top. Oh, that's pretty spot on if I do this on myself. And I'm just going to kind of flatten it with my hands a little bit. Get it to spread a little. And then grab our handy dandy rolling pin. And we're going to roll it out. There we go. That's fun. Sure sound effects. I just hit my knee. Oh, that hurt. Ooh. I don't know how thin it is. It looks pretty thin. Just want to make sure there's enough for all the buns. <laughs> she said buns. Yeah. Some spillage. Oh my god. No, stable down. I got scared. Okay, okay, okay. Pull, pull, pull. I've got this little tape measure here. So, let's see. That's about two millimeters thick. Sure. Let's toss it in the fridge. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? We have to do 100 grams of milk. It is 100. There it is. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna do 100 grams of water. Oh my God. Okay. Nice and slow. No. My worst nightmare. We did it. It's over 100. 100 grams of unsent unscented. Apparently, which is what I was about to say. Unsalted. Unsalted butter. Poor oh, butter. Okay. 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 100. Oh. Okay, so we're putting the butter back. That sounded weird to me. Put the butter back. Anyway, I have to do <laughs> two grams each of salt and sugar, which is just hilarious that it's so tiny. Nailed it. Okay, cool. So I've got my ingredients. Let's see what happens. So this next step, I'm going to measure out my flour that I need. So it's going to be 75 grams of regular flour, and then 25 grams of the almond flour. <clears throat> okay, now we add the almond flour. Ooh, okay. It's 102, which I think is fine. Um, again, I went a little bit over with the water, so this will help soak up a little bit of that. We'll see. I just realized I never hit the preheat for the oven. <laughs> Rookie mistake. I should have done that first. I'm gonna set the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius if you're fancy like that. You have one of those. Okay, bye. Next thing I'm gonna get ready, just to have all my ingredients ready to go, are the eggs. So the recipe says it calls for 200 grams of eggs and it says it's approximately four. One egg. So that already is, yeah, 51 grams it says. Obviously, Eggs vary in size, so they're going to vary in weight. Okay, so those are both about 51. One out of that's 101 grams. Okay, this one's bigger. This might be a big, big old mamma jamma. Yeah, so that brought us up to 162. Which one of these is smaller? These tiny. Let's see. Maybe this one's the smallest. Okay, we're going to go with this one. It looks like the smallest. So that brought us up to 211. Whatever, we're not gonna use it all. Moment of truth. Here's my milk and my water. We're gonna pour that in the saucepan like that. Boop. Um, I also added a half a teaspoon of almond extract to that. I forgot to do it on camera, so I did it off camera. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I didn't mean to keep things from you. I would never do that. We've got our pinches of sugar and salt, our two grams each, and we're gonna toss that in. Now our butter. Butter. Okay. So we're gonna put all this butter in here and get in there. Butter. Oh the recipe specifically recipe. What, am, what is with my mouth today? The recipe calls for a wooden spoon. It specifically says wooden spoon, which I assume has something to do with science that I don't really know, but that's fine. And we're gonna mix things with a wooden spoon in here. Stop splashing over. This milk is very sassy. I don't know why it's being so sassy. So this is, this is gonna take a second. I'll be, I'll be back. I'll be back once it's boiling. I won't leave, I promise. Started boiling, so we are going to Scoochie, scoochie, scooch. Scoochie, scoochie, scooch. Okay, <clears throat> and it says to remove it from the heat, so I'm actually removing it here. Add the flour in. Here goes nothing. Stir, 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 add the flour. Stir, 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 add the flour. Oh, all right. Just flung the flour onto my shirt, cool. Forming a big dough ball. Okay. Oh good, I think it's coming together. See? Just mixing and mixing and mixing. Oh, look at that! That's great. That came together great. This looks cool. Look at that. Isn't that cool looking? Guys, I think I did it right. I think I did it right. I am so happy right now. Amazing. Okay, so since it's coming together, it said to put it back on the heat. I, I don't know. I don't, wait, come with me. Come, come, come be on my journey. Okay, so it's, it looked like it came together. I don't know why I had to put it back on the heat, but that's what the recipe says. I'm just not 100% sure how it's supposed to look. It's pretty good to me. I don't know. Stay tuned. Well, it says to fit the stand mixer with your pedal attachment foot. We're just gonna do that with the hand mixer. Again, it's gonna be loud, so <clears throat> we'll see how this goes. It says to do this to let some of the steam out, to evaporate. I guess so it's not too hot when you put the eggs in. Evaporate! Evaporate! Oh yeah, I can feel it. I can feel the steam coming off. That's pretty cool. Steamy. Ooh, should I do like a facial? Ah. Oh, that did make me glow a little bit. Ooh, steam facial. Ooh. Okay, we're going for it. We're gonna add some egg. Which we want. I'm dropping things. Measuring cup down. I just want to give the motor a little bit of a break. You know, this wasn't like a super expensive hand mixer by any means. I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to look like. Okay, we just added a little more egg. It says smooth and glossy. Okay. I know there's something about how it's supposed to like drop off of the thing. Let me double check. I'll be right back. If it's the right consistency, it should come off of the spoon in one glop, but thick enough that it shouldn't fall off too easily. And it seems good, right? I think I'm gonna add a little bit more egg. Beat it! Beat it! Beat it! Add your eggs a little bit at a time and beat it! That didn't really work. I don't care. Let's see how that worked. Glop. Okay. I need a bit more egg, more egg. Oh, it's definitely smooth and glossy now. I will say, it really is just a, a a dance that I'm doing here. Didn't use all the eggs. I used most of them. I will say we had a little extra. I think I did use the full 200 grams that we needed. This next bit is, um, I don't know, kind of fun. Sure, this calls for five centimeters, which is about two inches. If you have a mold you can just draw in the middle of it. I don't have that many cookie cutters. I've never been like a cookie cutter person. I'm using a shot glass. Look at that. So it's about 
two inches, five centimeters in diameter, so I'm gonna use that to give myself a template for where the batter goes in. Do you really think I'm gonna make you watch me do all of those? No, come on. And voila, circles. I drew them on this side and I go around a couple of times to make it darker. Flip them over. At least that's the technique that I did when I made macaroons. Don't put your pastry on the side that you put the pencil because gross. Gross. Next we have to put the shoe pastry into a pastry bag, which I don't have pastry bags. I actually have a um, piping gun, I guess I would call it. A, this, we'll be using this later for the meringue because it has a fun fancy tip that I want to pipe. But I also feel like I'll have a little more control over how much gets piped out if I just use a Ziploc with the corner tip. Corner tip, bleh, corner cut off. The mouth is just rebelling for some reason today. Put it in a in a cup so that way you have a nice open stable place to pour batter in and you're not wrestling with it. Make sense? So I've got a big spoon here and I'm just going to scoop this into there. That seems like the consistency I've seen on the baking show. That seems pretty good. You guys can't even see what I'm doing. What am I doing? Okay. Scoop, scoop, scoop. I don't know if that's good or bad. I can't really tell. I feel like that's pretty good gloppiness. What do you think? Stands the test of time. Here goes nothing. Got my bag. Cut a corner off. Hold that. Okay. Let's see. So maybe I did add too much egg. We'll see. Now that I've piped them on there, I'm pretty sure that the batter is too runny. But we're going to keep going and see what happens because I'm not a quitter. I am feeling a little disappointed. Um, this was a big risk as far as adding almond flour in instead of just almond extract, trying to get some legit flavor instead of just that. But um, we're going to soldier on and see what happens. We're gonna make something. Might not be the right consistency, but hopefully it'll be delicious anyway. Uh, so if you remember our sable that we made, we're going to, it's been in the freezer this whole time. It says to use round cookie cutter, but again, I don't have that. I did get a heart shaped cookie cutter for Christmas for our gingerbread cookies. So I'm gonna use this because it's the right size. I've got 26 total, it was supposed to be 30, but I stopped because I ate didn't have enough batter anymore, which means I probably used too much on some of them. And it was gloopy. Gloopy, gloopy, gloopy. I got one. I did it. I did it. Oop, let's go back. Ooh, too close. So this little thing is gonna go right on top of the shoe bins. Yay. The sable, because it's basically just butter and sugar and flour. Um, it was nice and hard and frozen when I pulled it out, but it's hot here with the oven on, so um, heart shapes started to dwindle as I went along. Um, so some are made with love and some are made with fear. It's fine. In they go. In they go. So now that I have to bake for 20 minutes and it's extremely important not to open the oven for those first 20 minutes, no matter how much you want to. If you sadly are one of those people that doesn't have a window in your oven, doesn't matter. Do the full 20 minutes. Do not open that oven. If you let the steam out, it will deflate them. That's not what you want. There's a specific timing to let the steam out. So we need them to puff up now. Hopefully they will, probably not, but that's okay. They'll still be interesting, but leave the door alone until 20 minutes. Okay, so next we are going to be making the sugar syrup because we're making an Italian meringue. An Italian meringue, you make a sugar syrup that is heated to a specific temperature. So after you've fluffed up and actually whisked up the egg whites to a meringue, 
you drizzle in this warm uh, sugar syrup while whisking the eggs so that it, it, it tempers it. So it cooks the egg whites from the heat from the sugar syrup while actually sweetening the meringue to the right uh, sugariness. And then you can eat it just like that. That's for if you want to pipe soft meringue on things. Let's try. We've got our water heating. And it says to slowly add the sugar. I've got 250 grams of uh, cane sugar here. And then it says about 80 grams of water in here. Slowly add the sugar. So I'm just going to whisk the sugar into the water. And it says to have a wet pastry brush. So I've got my pastry brush sitting in a bowl of water over here. So I've got a bowl of water with my pastry brush. And it says to brush the sides with your pastry brush, with your wet pastry brush to prevent any um, sugar crystals from splattering up here. You don't want it to splatter. You want to try to keep it as chill as possible. Like chill out sugar syrup, like calm down. If your sugar splatters to the side and it gets stuck to the side of your pan, it'll burn, which is what you're trying to prevent. Nobody likes burnt sugar, but you don't have to wash me too all of this. That would be silly. So the timer is about to go off for our shoe pastry. Checked in there, through my window, I didn't open the door, <laughs> not after the lecture I gave you guys. And they're doing something. And that sable that I put on top is crackling. There we go. Hey Google, cancel timer. If you just asked about canceling the timer, there are actually none set at the moment. She's so sassy. I can't, I can't deal with her. At this point, we just have to open the oven and let the steam out. They haven't really puffed up much, but we'll let that steam out. Just a jar a little bit. Close back up. Uh, definitely too runny. Um, now we have to cook them for another five to ten minutes. It's time for the meringue. I've got the sugar syrup coming up to temperature. So I've got my egg whites in here. Make sure that's attached. Let those whoa. Didn't mean to be that close to camera. Now let those whip. That's loud. We're gonna let those whip, forming some soft peaks. And then we can do this experiment now. Ooh. We are now going to pour the sugar syrup, syrup. Did you hear that? Syrup, syrup, into the meringue mixture. We're hoping to drizzle this in slowly on while we're mixing on high speed and achieve stiff peaks with tempered egg whites. Tastes like marshmallows. The almond doesn't come through. Well, that's all the almond extract I have, so here's hoping. Still good. Okay. Very sadly, our shoe buns did not puff up. I was right, the mixture was too runny, um, so they didn't poof up like they're supposed to. Hopefully, they still taste good. I'm going to <laughs> make basically little sandwiches with these, with the pastry cream in the middle, top it off with some of the meringue. But uh, yeah, sadly, the shoe did not fit. It was runny. They didn't puff up the way that they're supposed to. They're little flat <laughs> discs. The pastry should still taste good, even if it's not the right consistency. The pastry cream turned out great. The meringue turned out great, so we've got two wins there. I'm gonna spoon some great pastry. Oh man, pastry cream in between and make these little sandwiches. Then we'll top them off with some meringue. 
Rang is the new slang for meringue, apparently. I'll top them off with some rang and then that, uh, and then I'll blowtorch it. You didn't see that coming, did you? I do have to say, the heart did work on a lot of them, which is really exciting for trying this again. Now I'm gonna spoon some meringue into my uh, decorating gun. <laughs> and uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay. Moment of truth. <laughs> I just made a weird pattern that was not what I intended. Pipe the meringue on and it doesn't look terrible. Ooh, all right. Okay, there you have it. Thanks everyone who followed me on this journey of my first Bake My Day. I hope I did bake your day. Not what I was going for, but uh, hopefully they'll still taste great. Thanks for watching.